2007's Clive Barker's Jericho is an obscure game, often considered by the masses to be one of the worst shooters of its era. Some would even go to make videos and reviews calling it the worst game ever made. Whenever I hear that phrase, worst game ever, I always wonder just how many games that person has played to come up with this conclusion and what games they've played. I'll be straight up with you right off the bat. This is definitely not the worst game ever made. And it doesn't even come close to it either. No, absolutely not. But it does have plenty of glaring issues that I will address during this review. What I think is fascinating is the developer of the game, Mercury Steam. This name caught my eye, and I knew I heard of it before, but I, I couldn't place where. Then about halfway through playing Jericho, I finally figured it out. This is the company behind those Castlevania Lords of Shadow games that were also generally disliked. Not only that, but this is the company that somehow made the best-selling Metroid game of all time. So how is it that a developer could go to make one of the worst, allegedly, worst games of all time to the best-selling of a massive Nintendo franchise? That is absolutely wild. And fun fact, this game for some reason got a Steelbook Collector's Edition. I would know, because I have it for the 360. It's actually kind of awesome to be honest with you, but I think part of that is because I'm a sucker for Steelbook cases. The premise of the game is centered around the main antagonist, the Firstborn. The basic concept here, without getting into too much detail, is that before God created Adam and Eve, God created a creature so powerful and so dangerous that he banished the firstborn into the abyss. But God underestimated the overwhelming power of the firstborn, and over the course of history, the firstborn would make several attempts to break out from the abyss into the mortal world, and each time taking bits and pieces from the regular world into the abyss and any more attempts could prove to be disastrous, completely destroying the world as we know it. That brings us to modern time, where the Jericho Squad is sent to a place called Al-Khali, where they learn that someone is trying to open up a portal to unleash the Firstborn once more. The game starts off really shaky, primarily because Ross, the main character, isn't very interesting. Unlike the majority of Jericho Squad, he has no special powers, let alone any powerful weaponry, whereas everyone else does have special powers, various equipment, and or better firepower. I guess that's not true. He does have the power to heal a downed ally, but Rawlings can do that as well, so he's not unique at all. About maybe 30 minutes into the game, the main character gets killed by Arnold Leach, a former member of the Jericho Squad who more or less turned to the dark side. But for some reason, Ross's spirit still remains with the Jericho squad. He's now able to take control and command the others in the unit, some of which are awesome, while others are downright pitiful. What is bizarre is how the main character reacts to his whole death scene. It's like he flat out doesn't give a shit. Ah, uh, yeah, I guess I'm dead, but hey, I can take over people's bodies now. That's cool, right? It, it's such a bizarre, strange Is sequence of events. I can feel it. Delgado, can you hear me? Rawlings, it's me, Ross. I don't know what happened. I think I'm in him. Put those away, damn it. It's me. Prove it. Jesus Christ, Paul. Should I tell them about Prague, or do you want to trust me on this one? We saw you die. Leech killed you. <laughs> Not all of me. Fascinating. I want you to try linking to Abby. Can you do that for me? Well, let's see. The graphics are halfway decent for the time. Yeah, some of the character models look a bit ugly, and some of the textures are muddy, uh, maybe even a bit crap, but it's, it's not a bad looking game at all. The visuals change depending on what time frame of the game you're in. So, for example, the second chapter of the game centers more around a World War II setting. 
and in a later chapter it goes to like medieval times then ancient rome and so on it's really interesting because they take these time frames in history and make them much darker and and much creepier fitting into the occult setting of the game very very well and you'll see a lot of disturbing creatures a lot of nasty visuals and i think it is just wonderful the voice work isn't really that bad either part of that is due to the cast being comprised of well-known talent like steve blum who has one of the most recognizable voices in video game history as well as other talents like kate higgins james horn and michael bell there are definitely parts in the game where the voice work shines above all others like when most of the evil creatures speak. For example, Lichhammer or when Big Boy Cassis makes his uh, delightful appearance. Uh, uh, new guest, have you come to join the feast? There's plenty for all. He's inside my head. Uh, won't you come closer? My eyes have grown so weak over time. <sighs> Jesus. Is that magic I smell amongst you? Why, this isn't another batch of outsiders come to ruin our party, is it? Oh, I love your kind more than any other. The sport is almost as satisfying as the flesh. I got first dibs on the fat man. It's all yours. I'm not getting anywhere near him. And what's this? You bring witches with you too? <laughs> then there's parts in the game where the voice work is really not good. The sound design is extremely hit and miss. I enjoy the music and a lot of the sound effects the creatures make, maybe even the sounds of the atmosphere going on around you, but holy mother of god. The guns sound absolutely dreadful in Jericho. They sound so weak, almost like toy guns you could buy at a Walmart for a couple bucks. And call me crazy, but I could swear I remember hearing some of the gun sounds from games back on the PS2 and even the original Xbox. While I'm on the subject of the guns, let's talk more about the weapons and the characters in Jericho in a little bit more detail. First off is that this game is before aiming down the sights had become like a common thing. Some of the characters do have scopes or other optics that you can aim with, but it's never really necessary to use them, at least all that often. There are some characters like Delgado, the big dude with the Gatling gun and fire powers, Black the telekinetic sniper, or even the blood mage ninja girl called Church, who you'll probably end up using more often than the others because their weapons or abilities are fantastic. But then you have a guy called Jones, with the same underpowered weapons as Ross has at the beginning of the game. He does have astral projection powers, but the only times you use it is to advance in the story. Outside of that, I don't have a clue why you would ever use this character. Cole is another one I don't really understand all that well. Her weapons are fine, but her gimmick is that she's a hacker. Now, what the hell do you need a hacker to fight demons and monsters for? What, are you going to ruin their credit score? Okay, yes, fine. Her ability to slow down time is really great, but similar to Jones's situation here... It's like her abilities were only there to advance in the story, like for plot purposes. Oh, and she can instantly refill people's ammo if they run low. Magically out of thin air. Because I guess that's something hackers do? I don't know. Then you have another character who I'm kind of stuck in the middle with. Father Paul Rawlings. I like his weapons. Sorta. He has two what look like desert eagles and you're able to independently swap from three different ammo types from exploding rounds, regular bullets, and concussions. The only thing is that the exploding rounds seem to be the only ammo type worth using 
for most occasions. The major drawback, though, is that it takes forever to reload. That and his ability to revive from long range sucks. The problem is that it takes far too long where you could just run up to a fallen ally and heal them in less than a second or two. Another not so great aspect of the game is the overabundance of quick time events. From in game to action sequences in cutscenes, there's a whole lot of them. They're annoying as hell, although the nice thing is that if you do mess up, the event resets itself, so it's not like it jumps back to your last checkpoint wherever the game saved. The worst is the quick time events when enemies get too close to you. If you mess up the button sequence, they instantly kill you. The events happen all the time, even when you're running around hacking and slashing them as church. You know, the one who specializes in close range combat. I dislike quick time events like the plague, and for some reason, it was just common practice for games around this time to have them, and I don't really think anyone ever liked them. The enemy AI isn't really all that bad, honestly. People seem to be of the opinion that this game has, like, the worst AI they've ever seen. And my response to that is that clearly you have not played some of the shit that I have. Deadfall Adventures, those numerous History Channel shooters, really anything made by the company Cauldron. I've literally played dozens upon dozens of games that had far, far worse enemy AI. Yeah, the enemies are predictable, the movements of the bosses, everything's kind of really easy to figure out, but that doesn't mean it's the worst ever. The allied AI, on the other hand, is abysmal. Half of all the combat in the game is comprised of you reviving your fallen teammates. Part of that is due to how stupid your allies are. For an elite squad of occult warriors, they habitually disregard commands you give them and for some reason think it's a great idea to rush into waves of enemies while dying in the process every single time without fail. Even the enemies that explode if you get too close to them, they charge at them for some reason. If you think that having a partner in Resident Evil 5 and 6 was annoying, play this game. It takes it to a whole new disastrous level. Before we move on, if you don't mind, I would like to take a moment here and shout out a clothing company that I randomly came across during my last Where's the Deals episode. I couldn't help but fall in love with the artwork immediately. Every bit of the artwork, all the designs that are put on the clothing and other merch is created by Yama. And I couldn't be more impressed by the artwork and Yama's personality and passion. So yeah, if you are interested, I do have a referral link in the description that'll give you 10% off your entire order. Now back to our regular programming. Equally as terrible is the level design. It's what truly takes Jericho a handful of steps back in the wrong direction. Visually, yes, the levels look fine. There's a creepy or eerie style to them. Until you really start to pay attention and you notice just how shallow the design is. How little soul there is to the design. Now let's take a moment here to look at another horror game called Singularity, a game that in my opinion is disgustingly underrated. The attention to detail in Singularity is absolutely incredible. I mean, just look at it. You could spend hours and hours just exploring the levels, admiring the visuals alone, and how much time must have went into creating them. Then you have Jericho, a lot of tight spaced corridors with random crates, random barrels, and knocked over barrels for no apparent reason other than, I guess that's what the devs had in their files of objects to throw into their levels? There's no sense of real immersion, nothing that really draws me in. It's like the levels aren't even completely fully made, as if they're like beta versions of an unfinished product, if that makes any sense. This game is a linear shooter, and I don't mind those types of games. In fact, I enjoy linear shooters generally more than open world ones. 
but in the case of Jericho's linear design, at its worst, it's nothing more than a straight up corridor shooter. You go down hallway after hallway, facing waves of enemies at a time, maybe once in a blue moon, you do get into an area that is, I guess, more open than usual, and then it goes right back to more hallways after hallways. Rinse, recycle, repeat until a cutscene or a boss fight. It becomes so mind-numbingly boring and overly repetitive to the point where I had to play this game in a wave of an hour at a time. And the only thing that really kept me interested in the game and wanting to continue on is to see where the story was going to go and I was curious as to what creatures I would come across. Now, fighting against the evil creatures, on the other hand, is not the most fun thing in the world. Taking aside the constant having to revive teammates, you notice a trend of the combat staying pretty well stagnant throughout the game. There's parts of the combat that are frustrating and or flat out annoying, like how every enemy in the game is an absolute bullet sponge taking nearly a mag, if not more, from a standard machine gun to kill them. Certain weapons are obviously more powerful than others, but even the sniper at times can take like three or four shots center mass to down even the most basic enemy. If you are looking for a truly scary game, Jericho just does not fit the bill. It is not scary at all outside of the frightening looking enemies and disturbing visuals. It's more of an action shooter with horror themes to it. It is not at all like a survival horror. There's nothing about the game that is scary, like how Silent Hill is, or Resident Evil, Fatal Frame, maybe even Amnesia, for example. And I don't really say that as a negative thing towards Jericho, as more of a warning to others who are wanting a true horror experience. To be honest with you, going to the grocery store and seeing the prices for a pound of meat is much more frightening than anything in Jericho. This game has nothing on that. If you have seen my videos before, you must know by now that most of the games I cover are in the obscure variety, and they tend to have issues with frame rate. Jericho, to my surprise, doesn't have any frame rate problems that I personally came across. The quick time events, cutscenes, and in-game combat, I didn't seem to come across any sort of graphical issues at all, not even any bugs either, which is very, very strange the more I think about it. Before I move on, I do need to point out two things. The game can be completed in around five to six hours, and that would be fairly standard for single player campaigns, but Jericho does not have any form of multiplayer, competitive, or co-op. There's not a whole lot of replay value here outside of, I guess, achievements if you do decide to go that route. The other thing is the ending of the game. It's become somewhat controversial for being one of the strangest and worst endings in video game history, even cracking people's top fives and top ten lists. I don't exactly see why it's considered one of the strangest, but as far as it being terrible, yeah, it, it absolutely is. Spoilers, I guess, if you care. So the last battle is with the child or the firstborn, which was obvious from the start of the game that this was going to happen. However, beforehand, a few of your squad members get killed in brutal fashion by the firstborn. However, if you're currently in possession of... The boss fight is easy as all piss. In fact, it's one of the easiest boss fights in the entire game. And when you beat him, for some reason, Arnold Leach, the guy who killed Ross at the beginning of the game, decides to help Jericho and takes the child away into the portal. Why? I guess because he started it and now wants to finish it? The cave that you guys are in starts to collapse, so you guys escape from the bottom and boom, credits. Uh, okay, what? 
what is Ross just permanently a ghost trapped in the body and mind of his friends? Did, did the firstborn ever truly get sealed it, in that portal? Why did Leech help? What's going on? Why? Who okayed this? I guess it's a cliffhanger, but it was done in possibly the worst way I've ever seen. Yeah, let's just roll credits. That'll fucking do. It's, it's just terrible. It would be fair to say that Jericho is not for everyone, but then, even with me saying that, I don't exactly know who this game is for, because it can't really be those who are fans of horror games, because it's it's not scary. I mean, there's infinite amount of games that are better in that realm than Jericho. It's also not really a solid shooter either. I mean, I enjoyed the game, don't get me wrong, I probably will play it again at some point in my life, but I think a lot of that stems down to the game's quirkiness. I enjoy weird, quirky games for whatever reason, and that is what Jericho very much is in a nutshell. It fits into that excellent concept, poor execution category. And perhaps if the developers spent a half year longer on Jericho, you know, really polishing it up and all that, it might have done a hell of a lot better. Shockingly enough, in that same year the game came out, Clive Barker threw around the idea of creating a sequel to the game, but it never actually happened. This would go on to be Clive Barker's last video game. It's a shame because the idea of a really creepy Clive Barker game on, say, a modern console that's actually well made sounds like a fantastic time. Maybe one day, who knows, the night is still young. Thanks for watching, everyone. This is the longest review I've made in a very long time. And if you've enjoyed it, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. And with that, everyone, take care, and I will see you next time.